All right, guys, we're going to try to get these mounts tacked on and everything done. We got the bumper all drilled out. Get these mounts tacked in place and probably welded. And then weld on the end covers as well, which look kind of crappy because they got cut out. But I think we'll be in good shape. Uh, no, we're not. That sucker is small. About right on the fitment. It'll be close. We'll see. One thing to make sure you're when you're welding, tack here, tack there, a couple tacks on the back side as well. That helps keep this bracket pretty well true. Which it's true to the bore. You can see it's pretty well true to the angle too. So because if you do all your welding on this side first, if you weld this side first, it's gonna pull that bracket over. So these welds over here help keep it straight up and down. So you'll want to weld a little, weld a little, weld a little, weld a little.
I don't think I can make it out. All right, guys, I don't know if I lost the footage I already took and my GoPro is acting a little goofy. It just shut off on me a minute ago while I was time lapsing. But I wanted to at least show you what I was doing here. If it did cut my footage, I've tacked these in place, tack them on both sides. Don't do the beginner's mistake of just welding one side out because it'll make the bracket lean over towards the side of the weld. You try to keep your weld evened out. But on this little plate here, I've got a pretty good gap, which you can see. You actually see into the tube. So my first pass, I just, the tube's a lot thicker than this steel and I'm not gonna touch it because I'm sure it's super hot. The tube is a lot thicker. This is probably eighth, maybe if it's lucky, the tube's quarter. So it's twice as thick at least. There's a idea of the thickness. So my first pass was across the top of the tube to butter up and let the weld bead roll down a little bit. So again, this is just more of a water seal. Again, it only holds the light. All right, guys, quick show of the welds, what everything's looking like. I did make this a two passer to where I run basically straight into the tube to build up, sort of cover the gap. And then I run back across that weld bead a second pass to, to knit, knit it in. My other welds, they don't look that great. This is the last weld I've done. That weld, I haven't even cleaned the slag off of it, but I started down on the far end, worked my way down here. Welding, again, practice makes perfect. The more you weld, the better you get. Uh, part of the problem, and it will cause your welds to look shitty like this. And I'll see if I can make this thing do it. And you can actually hear it. If you notice there, it sort of speeds up and slows down. So number one, the tip and the torch is probably shot now. The uh, liner, not it's not the newest liner in the world either. So that intermittent feed, it makes it hard to run good weld. Now, it, it makes it hard to run good looking weld. This weld is perfectly sound from a structural aspect. It's not gonna tear away. It's got real good penetration. So it's a really good connected weld. I've run a lot of weld. The reason I'm taking a break is the torch is so hot right now. It, uh, it's cooled off, it's been cooling off for about 15 minutes. I can touch it here now, but uh, part of the reason it's so hot is I'm not running any shield gas. This is flux cord wire, it's not solid. It's got a flux, kind of like a stick electrode has flux on the outside. It's the rough looking texture on a stick electrode. This has flux on the inside. It burns hot. And when you're not running shield gas, your torches get pretty hot, especially if you run a lot of, oh, a lot of wire pretty quick. This welder's got enough duty cycle that can burn and burn and burn for a good bit of time. So your torch will get hot. The tip gets messed up. And then it'll even weld itself to get the wire will weld itself in the tip every once in a while and it brings you to a sudden stop. So I will say this for beginners starting out. And I say this coming from I welded with this here. I also work at a company I design welded structures, but I've gone out and welded in the weld school, past welder training, basically with better equipment. And this isn't a bad welder, don't get me wrong. This welder's just not intended to run long passes and sort of more of a production style speed setting. So it's better for run a little bit, take a break, run a little bit, take a break, or thinner material. Because when I'm running this, I've got the voltage turned up to basically four for this. This I had it turned down to two. And then I'm running like 35 to 40 wire feed speed here and upwards of 60 up there. I don't exactly know what those numbers mean. Those are not in feet per second or inches per inches per minute. They're not in inches per minute or anything like that. It's some Hobart weird oddity. But uh, that's sort of where this thing like to run over there. I'll show you these welds. <clears throat> they don't look as good. So 
so they look a little nastier it's still it's cooled off a good bit i can actually touch it now but i actually tried to fill in some bad weld right there and i got a little bit of a, a pucker right there so my first welds your first welds you're kind of feeling out what the welder wants to do versus the steel with the thickness thicker the steel more heat you're going to want to run and then when you're burning into thin stuff you want to try to keep the heat focused on the thickest member and then wash the weld down into the thin stuff but keep your heat up here in the thick stuff and then just sort of wash it down but you're trying to keep most of your wire headed into this thicker stuff and just sort of you're sort of dragging the pool down into the thin stuff so those are a few tips i've got again i'm no expert welder you can tell the quality is not great but i'm not going to grind these so i'm going to leave them and uh we'll move on to uh, welding finishing up this weld and then i'll get it welded on the trailer How's that end out there for you, too? Awesome. Alright, let's make sure this thing here is cool. All right, guys, quick update on what I've decided to do. Uh, because last time this bumper rusted out, uh, you see it hangs down. It doesn't have a lot of support over here. We actually caught it with a tree root and we were pushing it with a tractor and it folded it up real bad. So I'm actually gonna put this, let me get my, I got mosquitoes are after me in here. 
I'm gonna put a diagonal support brace in here, just like that, out a quarter inch. And then I've, I ran into a couple gaps, like right down there you can see, the wires out of the way. Got a pretty good gap to that beam. So I've cut a couple backup pieces. And then same over here, where I've got a pretty good gap right in here. I've cut this L bracket to back all this up. So that'll cover up most of the gaps, make welding that a lot easier. So I got something to weld against. Got that little just L bracket I cut out. So I'm gonna plop these in, go to welding. Uh, also because this bumper is shorter, it's the only tube I could get. I ended up just notching this with a grinder and beating it over and welding it into place right there. So now it's got a bit of an angle on the rub rail. And then I still need to finish welding in that. And then that'll be about it. Uh, it's just gonna be burning a lot of wire. So I'm not gonna film it all. So I'll bring you back and show you what the finished product looks like. But uh, or I might try to time lapse it. The last time I time lapsed with this camera, it went bad. So. This one, the gaps didn't turn out nearly as bad as over there. So. All right, guys, the welding is done. Yeah, not always my best work in some places, but uh, good enough. Rough ride. <laughs> These are some of the better welds. It all uh, turned out pretty good though. Got my support brace in there. And I don't think I'll have too many issues out of it. Now throw a coat of paint on it. What do you think, Cammie? There you go, one can of paint later. And that's done. So I do plan to paint the rest of this trailer at some point in time, but this right here will keep the bumper at least semi-protected until we get to that point. Mm -hmm. Hope you guys enjoyed the video.